Today we're going to be doing something a little bit different for the channel and overanalyzing one single data sheet, one of the new Space Marine data sheets that come out of the 9th edition release. Today we're going to be talking about the Space Marine Mario Kart Racer, I mean the Invader ATV Squad. In this video I'm going to cover a holistic view of the unit's data sheets, its strengths and weaknesses, synergies within the Space Marine Codex with every individual Space Marine chapter, and give a final rating for the data sheet. What's up folks, welcome back to Tactical Tortoise. My name, as always, is Trevi, and today we're gonna be talking about some Invader ATVs. Before we get into the video, I just wanna drop a quick reminder to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. We talk about 40K all the time, as well as other miniature war games and news around the industry. So if you like that kind of content, jump on over, hit that subscribe button. We've also just launched a new membership feature where you can join the channel and that lets us do all sorts of cool things like give access to sweet emojis. Uh, we'll unlock a couple more emojis once a few more members jump on. And it also gives you a cool little badge that evolves and grows more guns as long as you hold on to that membership so that's pretty sick so you can click that join button down below the video if you would like to join that anyway let's get on to talking about the invader atv this is going to be a little bit of a new style of video for the channel where we talk about a single data sheet and i'm going to try to start with some of the new data sheets coming out of this ninth edition space marine release and this time, talking about our new two-man biker squad. Please let me know down in the comments whether you enjoyed this video and would like to see more of its ilk. That really helps to let me know what people really want to watch and make videos that you want to see. So thanks, everybody, for your input. So let's talk about the Invader ATV squad. The Invader ATV comes in at a pretty hefty points cost of 80 points, 85 if you kit it out with its multi melta option, and a power level cost of four power level each. It comes stock with an Onslaught Gatling Cannon, twin auto bolt rifles, as well as the ever-present frag crack grenades and a nice little bolt pistol. Interesting that there's like two figures on the actual model, but it only gets one bolt pistol. Everybody only gets one. The invader can be brought in units of a single model all the way up to units of three. We'll talk about the optimal unit size a little bit later, but I do think that there's an argument to be made for either going the minimum or the maximum sized unit. Some standouts of their profile include their exceptional movement speed of 14, which is to be expected on a Space Marine biker, but it's a pretty big deal given the exceptional resilience of the unit. Being a biker, it is also toughness 5, but comes in at this staggering 8 wounds. So you're going to have to chew through a lot of beef to get even one of these guys off the table. They come in at a standard 3 plus armor save, leadership 7, which will probably never matter, 4 base attacks, which is actually pretty reasonable. Do remember that you will have shock assault available, so they're going to be coming in at 5 attacks apiece, which means that a unit of 3 of these guys putting out 15 attacks, and being a relatively small unit means it's very easy to get within half an inch of another friendly in order for the entire unit to make their attacks. So they can actually put out a little bit of a punch in melee, although they aren't actually equipped with any melee weapons, so I wouldn't expect them to do any heavy lifting. I mentioned before that they have a couple different options in terms of their weaponry, they can either take a multi melta or stick with their onslaught Gatling cannon. This gives the unit a lot of flexibility in terms of their role on the battlefield. Either they're going to come in with this multi melta heavy two strength eight D6 with the potential of D6 plus two if you're within half range damage to hit heavily armored vehicles or multi wound enemies, or an onslaught Gatling cannon to bring eight strength five heavy heavy bolter equivalent shots to really size down a lot of infantry and lightly armored vehicles. Again, they're coming in with that twin auto bolt rifle so they're going to be on top of that planting another six shots uh, coming out of that underslung gun as well which means that in grand total the onslaught gallon cannon build is going to be shooting 14 times per model so you can imagine that a unit of three of these guys shooting a grand total of 42 attacks is going to be pretty good at sweeping a lot of infantry right off the table they, of course, have Angels of Death, which gives them all of those wonderful abilities like Shock Assault and They Shall Know No Fear. They have Turbo Boost as well, being a Space Marine bike, which means that when they advance, they're going to be going an additional six inches on top of their base movement of 14. This makes them pretty good in the late game, especially at running up to contest or control objectives. Early game, you typically want to be just doing a standard move with these guys or even holding them still in some situations. So that Turbo Boost ability probably won't come into play. But if you need to, they can rev those engines and get right up the table to jump 
jump on objective markers or potentially score some secondary objectives. They have the Ravenwing keyword if they're in the Dark Angels chapter, which is a big deal. We'll talk about that in a sec. And hilariously, they are, I believe, one of the first non-monster, non-vehicle units to explode in the entire game, uh, hitting for uh, three inches for a single mortal wound on a six when they die. So... That's funny. That's just <laughs> that's just a that's just a laugh. Hilariously, on these multi-model units that explode, uh, they will actually hit their own unit automatically if they do blow up and there's any remaining models in that unit. So they're going to be dealing mortal wounds to themselves if any of their members end up uh, going up in flames. In terms of keywords, they have Biker Primaris and uh, their own name as a keyword. But Biker and Primaris, obviously, big deals uh, in terms of stratagems. But what they are missing, the number, the big gold standard for keywords is core. And that's going to really shape a lot of what you need to be thinking of in your list construction when you're tr taking this unit. The fact that they don't have core means they don't n innately benefit from a lot of rerolls. So sourcing rerolls independently or other bonuses to hit is going to be a really big deal to squeeze the most out of your invader ATV squad. So moving on from there, let's talk about how you play these guys, and then we'll move into some synergies, both with the Space Marine Codex as a whole and with individual sub-factions. Firstly, I mentioned before that you can take them in units of up to three, but that is an interesting choice because I think both of the different sizes of units have different strengths and weaknesses. In some situations, for example, if you're taking them in the Salamanders chapter or in a successor chapter using the skilled artisans successor chapter trait, bringing them in units of one will actually improve their chances to hit or wound since each individual ATV, if you're bringing three uh, individuals, will be getting that once per phase reroll. Individual units with a very high movement speed as well well, are excellent at scoring points on secondary objectives such as engage on all fronts since it's easy to get that unit wholly within any given table quarter and with a potential move of 20 inches thanks to their turbo boost they are not going to have too much problem getting way up the table and getting wherever you need them to. If you're not building individuals into your list for those reasons, I would instead look at bringing large units of three. For these guys, it's even more important to source a lot of rerolls or hit modifiers. Obviously, you can't, you won't be able to do it with your rights of battle, auras, your chapter master, or your chaplain. So you're going to have to look elsewhere. But being able to buff up the insane damage output of, of a unit of three of these guys, especially equipped with Gatling cannons potentially to sweep a whole ton of infantry, is going to be really important. In addition, they also make a pretty good bunker. They have a ton of wounds. They're relatively difficult to kill, and you, as we'll talk about in a sec, are almost endlessly regeneratable, so they're going to be able to hold off your opponent for a significant period of time and can hold out objectives. They also have a very large base, so on the table, they take up a lot of real estate, which can be really annoying annoying for an opponent that's trying to press aggressively forward through your army. So for those reasons, I would also be looking to improve the survivability of a large unit because you can keep them going for quite a long time. In most cases, you probably won't be able to buff multiple of these units at once, so taking multiple units of three may not be the greatest idea, although it is like basically the greatest meme ever, and it gives your list kind of a critical mass of toughness five or eight wound models, so it may be good if you're in a meta that has a tough time killing them just to be able to force your opponents right off of objective markers under an unending tide of blue Mario Karts. So let's talk about some synergies within the Space Marine Codex that is going to help these guys out. Obviously, their primary is keyworded, so that's going to be a big deal for stratagems like Gene Rot Might, which can help them punch a little bit harder in melee, but that's not really their goal, so you probably won't be using that too often. And especially Transhuman Physiology, which doesn't require that they be infantry, just that they be Primaris. So even if your opponent's hitting them with some big anti-tank weaponry, you can force that big 24 wound unit of three ATVs to only be wounded on 4+. They're also biker keyworded, which means that they unlock a lot of stratagems such as skilled riders and hit and run warfare. If you're using them as a screen or to body block your opponent off, hit and run warfare is actually excellent because it will allow the unit to fall back and then continue to shoot with those big old Gatling cannons. Skilled riders as well is basically a smoke screen equivalent for your bikers. That's going to give them minus one to be hit as soon as they're targeted. So again, if you're running a big unit of them, you can make them even harder to deal with at range. And since they're below five, models, Transhuman Physiology is only going to cost you one CP, which is fairly glorious. 
In addition, looking at Psychic Powers, you can also get them a 5-plus Invulnerable save from Psychic Fortress, since that does not require them to be core for some reason to work on them. So that does buff their survivability up a little bit if you're fighting against high AP weaponry. And last but definitely not least, we got to talk about some Apothecaries supporting these guys. Firstly, Apothecaries are going to give them a 6-plus Damage Ignore roll, which makes them a lot harder to kill. Again, if you're considering a unit of three of them has 24 wounds, and one in six of those wounds is going to be saved by that Apothecary Aura, that's effectively adding four full wounds to the unit, which is awesome. Secondly, if you use the Combat Revival Stratagem on them, it returns an entire bike at full wounds back to the unit. So even if your opponent has gotten through their Skilled Riders, their Transhuman Physiologies, all of the buffs that you can send on them to make them as difficult to kill as possible, even after they take one down, you can just spend a couple CP, pop one of those guys right back in. This gets even crazier when you start talking about the Chief Apothecary upgrade. That makes the Combat Revival Stratagem free every turn, so you're going to get one back for freezies, but also lets that Apothecary heal them for a flat three. So if there are any left alive without being totally wiped out, you can be regenerating them pretty quickly in addition to bringing them back. The synergy here is intense. It can really make a unit of three of these guys feel like they're um, impossible to kill, especially when you're dumping a lot of psychic powers and stratagems into them and really using them to defend a very important point on the table. So now let's talk about some chapter-specific synergies. I'm going to go through all the main chapters in the Codex, and uh, basically starting at the least synergistic and moving up, I'll talk about any interesting ways you can use ATVs and interesting synergies with stratagems or abilities in each of these chapters. First up, we have Raven Guard. Unfortunately, Raven Guard, while they seem like as the masters of the hit-and-run guerrilla warfare game plan would be perfect at using ATVs in their army, unfortunately have basically the least synergy with them. They're typically too busy flying around in their little jetpacks uh, and looking like birds to actually make use of bikes in their list very well. Really, all they can do is sometimes give some very situational survivability thanks to their chapter tactic, but also have false flight to allow the unit to fall back, shoot, and then also charge. So a bit of a souped up version of the hit and run warfare stratagem. It does cost you an additional CP, so... It's not even worth it a lot of times since these guys don't hit super hard in melee. Black Templars also don't really have much going on. They can give them a 4 plus invulnerable save using the Aurelian Shroud, but that's only for one turn. And unfortunately, almost all of their abilities affect either stuff in melee or just infantry. So not really any synergy with the ATV squad there. Blood Angels, Flesh Terrors, and Space Wolves are also pretty similar. They can... Each of them allow the unit to heroically intervene with a stratagem, which is actually very interesting. Space Wolves obviously will just heroically intervene all the time also, but that's neither here nor there. For a unit with such a large base size and footprint on the table as the ATV squad, being able to heroically intervene is a big deal, since your opponent has a very difficult chance to stop it if they're trying to engage into your castle of space marines. Because of their large bases, you can also use them to pin enemy units in place by uh, consolidating in to touch them, to make it impossible for them to consolidate or pile in and get deeper into your units. You can use them to just take up real estate where their pile in and consolidates might want to be. If you're good at manipulating the fight phase, this unit can actually do a lot of work with that heroic intervention ability. That said, that's about all that they have going for them. Uh, they have a lot of buffs in melee, but otherwise it's not very good. Although Space Wolves, I should mention, do have the Morkai's Teeth Bolt Relic, which uh, can allow them to reroll once the wound, which is pretty nice to have. Interestingly, that also doesn't require that the ATV squad itself be Space Wolves, so if you're playing a mixed Astartes or mixed Imperium list, you can shoot something with the Morkai's Teeth Bolts and then get reroll ones on your entire army, so that's pretty nice. Death Watch as well doesn't really have much going for it, but... I will say that the chapter tactic for Death Watch, which is reroll, hit ones to hit against Xenos, perfect. We want to source some rerolls for these guys, so that's great. And reroll ones to wound against one battlefield roll of your choice. So you can give these guys some pretty serious rerolls with Death Watch. But unfortunately, without any unique stratagems or warlord traits or anything right now, Death Watch are kind of in the dump, so they don't have a lot going on in there. Similarly, Ultramarines have a lot of their abilities moved to core only, so even things like the Seal of Oath and Gilliman's rerolls will not affect the ATV squad. That said, they do have access to squad doctrines, which can set the ATV squad back into 
Devastator Doctrine for one CP, which is very nice considering all of their major weapons, the multi melta and the Onslaught Gatling Cannon, are both heavy, so they're going to be benefiting from that plus one AP if they're set back to Devastator. You can also use Rapid Redeploy to set them up after the roll to go first happens. This is a pretty interesting combo for such a fast moving unit. They're a unit that can hide behind terrain very well because they can peek out very easily with that huge 14 inch movement and still get a reasonable threat range up the table. And in addition, they have so much firepower and so much movement that they alpha strike very hard. So being able to deploy them knowing that you're going to be able to put them in the optimal position is very useful with Ultramarines. That said, that goes for the entire Ultramarines army. So ATV squad aren't particularly unique in that situation, although their fast movement and their high firepower does set them apart a little bit. White Scars are a faction that you would think has some good synergy with this unit being a biker unit, but unfortunately a lot of the White Scars abilities, like some of the factions that we've talked about before, are centered on being more aggressive and melee oriented. That said, they do give a little bit of a flexibility to the ATV unit, allowing it to advance and shoot with Hunter's Fusillade, or giving them additional access to the ability to fall back and shoot, which is nice to have if you need to do it with multiple units in a turn. And lastly, they can encircle, which is pretty nice, and give some interesting options as especially for the multi-melta variety. But generally, I don't know how often you'll see the ATVs in a White Scars army. Now, Imperial Fist is where things start to get a little bit interesting. If you're taking large units of them, Imperial Fist actually have a couple interesting options to buff their survivability. They have the Fortify Psychic Power, which can heal for additional wounds on top of the Apothecary healing them. They also have Pain as a Lesson to give them a 6 plus damage ignore roll if the Apothecary is not around. And Bolster Defenses gets them to a 2 plus save by giving them plus 1 save as long as they don't move. Unfortunately, they're relatively short range will mean that they'll probably have to move at some point in the game. But if your opponent is going to be coming at you aggressively, that's a very good way to push this ATV squad up into a next level of survivability. They also obviously have exploding sixes on bolters as their chapter tactic, which is very nice for the six auto bolt rifle shots that each of these guys is going to be putting out every turn. And they have tank hunters to reroll wounds against vehicles, sometimes maybe if they really want to. Now, all of that is true for the Imperial Fist successor chapter Crimson Fist, but on top of that, Crimson Fists also have the chapter tactic, which is actually really sick for single model ATV squads. Crimson Fists get plus one to hit against squads that are at least five models larger than them. And the ATV, even though it's a big chonky model, only counts as one since it's not a vehicle. That means that if you're shooting at an enemy squad of six or more models, that ATV is going to be hitting on twos, which is one of the few ways that we have to buff their accuracy since they probably won't be benefiting from any auras or rerolls. That's pretty cool if you want to take three individual ATVs with Gatling cannons potentially and have them just scythe down infantry hitting on twos, probably wounding on threes, and with those exploding sixes as well and those auto bolt rifles from the Crimson Fist chapter tactic as well. I think that's actually a really cool combo and in conjunction with all of the other Imperial Fist abilities that Crimson Fists also get access to to buff their survivability, I actually think that they're a pretty good option here. Next up, talking about Salamanders, obviously Salamanders are excellent for a multitude of reasons. They buff their survivability both with their chapter tactic and some of their abilities. They buff their melta weapons, so if you're taking the multi melt of variety, you're going to be getting that plus one to wound in Tactical Doctrine, which is awesome. If you're taking individual single ATVs, the single reroll to wound per phase for each one of them is going to be very useful, like I mentioned before. They also have some other interesting abilities that can buff the survivability of the unit. For example, Stand Your Ground gives you a two plus save as long as the unit didn't advance, which they probably won't be doing that often. That is only against damage one weapon, so it's not super useful, but it is worth mentioning. Well, a lot of the defensive buffs of salamanders moved to being core only their psychic powers actually didn't change at all so both fire shield and drake skin can go in a big unit of these guys to buff up their survivability even more fire shield makes them a little bit harder to charge and makes them minus one to be hit so it does overlap a little bit with skilled riders but it means that you get to save the cp drake skin brings them up to toughness six so if you're fighting against a lot of strength five or strength six weapons that's actually going to be a really really big deal it's pretty good in the uh, invader atv mirror matches where they're both uh, trying to hit each other with Onslaught Gatling Cannons all day. Lastly, Born Protectors is an interesting option for them. While the Overwatch it gives you isn't super good, although having a high volume of shots is kind of where you want to be with Overwatch, you would ideally have access to rerolls during that Overwatch shot, and unfortunately they don't. But it is another way for the unit to heroically intervene, which, again, as I talked about before, is a pretty interesting option just to block a ton of real estate with these guys. Getting down to the end of the chapters here, we have Dark Angels, and this is where things get super duper 
super interesting. As I mentioned before, Invader ATVs get the Ravenwing keyword. This means that they benefit from a whole swath of additional abilities on top of the Dark Angels Doctrine and on top of the Dark Angels Chapter Tactic and Super Doctrine that they can make use of. For example, they get a 5 plus invulnerable save all the time as long as they don't remain stationary. That that's sick. A three plus save, a lot of times is going to get hit by minus three weapons like last cannons or star cannons. They're going to get that five up and that's even buffable even further if they decide to advance. And thanks to the Raven Wing keyword. Additionally, Azrael's aura to give them a four plus invulnerable save isn't core restricted. So you can get them just to a static four plus invulnerable save against ranged attacks if Azrael is standing nearby, which is awesome. Dark Angels also have multiple ways to bring them back to Devastator Doctrine, so if you want that delicious AP2 on their Onslaught Gatling Cannons, you're going to be able to do that. The tactically flexible Warlord trait, specifically for Ravenwing units, can set them into Devastator Doctrine for the entirety of the game if they want, and I should remind you as well that because of the Dark Angels Super Doctrine ability, that will also buff their range up to 30 inches on their Gatling Cannons, which is sick. They also have Brilliant Strategist, which gives them a once per game setback to Devastator Doctrine. Both of those are excellent, in, especially in conjunction with the Stratagem to set them back to Devastator Doctrine from the Space Marine Corps book. So you have plenty of options to keep them in the Doctrine that they really want to be in. They also have some excellent units like Azrael that I just mentioned that synergize well with them. I also I mentioned before the interaction with Chief Apothecary that's excellent. Ravenwing Apothecaries are basically just a better Apothecary. They're a little bit pricier, but you he comes on a bike, so he's harder to kill, he's faster. He can jump around the table to heal different people if you want. Perfect upgrade for a Chief Apothecary, so if you're getting one anyway, you might as well get the good stuff. They also benefit from the Dark Shroud Aura as well to be minus one to hit. Again, that's another thing that sort of intersects with Skilled Riders, but again, you don't have to spend ACP on it. It's a freebie, so that's pretty nice. So Dark Angels have a ton of excellent buffs for the Invader ATV squad, and I think they're very interesting. Not to mention, if you are able to stand still, and a lot of times you will be able to do that because the Dark Angels will get uh, plus six inches of range while they're set in Devastator Doctrine, you, while you lose the five plus invulnerable save, you will get plus one to hit just thanks to uh, Grim Resolve, their chapter tactics. So again, we have a way to get them, not a reroll to hit, but we, we do have a way to get them a bonus to hit, and that's going to buff their fire power quite a bit last but certainly not least this one actually caught me by surprise i had sort of gone into this list assuming that iron hands would like be good for these guys but not you know super great but it turns out iron hands atvs are are actually sick <laughs> they have so many cool synergies with iron hands interestingly they aren't vehicles so a lot of the iron hands specific synergies don't really work on them but they do have a lot of other cool things going for them. Obviously, the chapter tactic, uh, Flesh is Weak, is very nice to give them an additional 6 plus uh, damage ignore, but that doesn't stack with the Apothecary 6 plus damage ignore, so if you're bringing that big unit of 3 with the Chief Apothecary next to them, that will not, they, they won't stack on top of each other. The Iron Hand Super Doctrine ability is also perfect for these guys. It gives them reroll ones to hit with all of their heavy weapons as long as they're in Devastator Doctrine. Sick! We're doing it! We're getting there! Now, obviously, Devastator Doctrine is only for one round, except that Iron Hands also have Methodical Firepower to set a unit back to Devastator Doctrine for one CP, so cheaper than the core rulebook stratagem for it. So, we have easy access to rerolls on this unit. We have a couple ways to buff their survivability, but it gets even better. It's so good. If you're using this unit to, to screen out objectives and block off a lot of real estate, a lot of times they're going to be soaking charges. And so for those situations, we have optimal repulsion doctrines available, which will buff their overwatch from a 6 plus to a 4 plus. For some reason, I, this hasn't been eroded, but in 8th edition, Iron Hands had a 5 plus overwatch, and optimal repulsion doctrines improved that to a 4 plus as long as you had the Iron Hands chapter tactic and weren't a successor chapter. If you were a successor chapter, it buffed it to a 5+. plus. While Iron Hands lost their 5+, plus innate Overwatch, Optimal Repulsion Doctrines has not been changed and still improves you to a 4+. plus. So, that's amazing. So, you're going to be hitting on 4s, re-rolling 1s, thanks to either Methodical Firepower, which lasts for a full round, or just being in the Devastator Doctrine anyway, and putting out potentially 42 shots with this unit. That's crazy. If we want to buff their damage even farther, we have Mercy is Weakness, which will will give double hits for sixes. If you're firing a huge volume of firepower, those exploding sixes are going to deal an excellent amount of damage. And in addition, Iron Father Fieros, the star of the Iron Hand supplement, can give them plus one to hit. Fieros' Signum Array just picks a friendly Iron Hands unit within three inches and gives them plus one to hit. It doesn't need to be a core unit. There's no other restrictions on it. They just get plus one to hit. So 
all in all, you can have this big, meaty unit hitting on twos, re-rolling ones, so almost perfect hit rolls. You can have them exploding on sixes. You can have them locked into the Devastator Doctrine for an additional AP for the entire game. Unfortunately, Fieros's aura of a 5 plus invulnerable save does only work on infantry, so it will not affect the ATV. So unless you're taking Psychic Fortress on a Librarian, which you could do with Tome of Malkador and still get access to the Technomancy Discipline, which is a sick discipline, by the way, you won't be able to get them in invulnerable save. But you can increase their armor save with Psy Steel Armor, again, from that Technomancy Discipline, to get them to that 2 plus armor save. So all in all, Iron Hands have a ton of stuff that works super well with these guys. Pretty thematic, I think, for a unit that's basically a vehicle, that the vehicle chapter would buff them pretty well. It's kind of weird that they're not vehicles, to be honest, but I think uh, that does make them a lot better because it gives them access to those stratagems. <laughs> So with all of the sub-faction synergies out of the way, let's talk about a final review and a final verdict for this Invader ATV datasheet. On the whole, the unit is extremely hard to kill, especially when you're taking that big unit of three, coming in at a massive 24 wounds with the potential to be buffed into the stratosphere of survivability with all of the incredible synergies that we talked about. The Onslaught Gatling Cannon version can put out an immense amount of anti-infantry firepower with 24 of those Strength 5 Heavy Bolter equivalent shots coming out at 24 inches, as well as an additional 18 Strength 4 shots being put out by the, just those three models, which is crazy. Unfortunately, the multi melt variety is overshadowed by a couple other options in the Codex, especially Attack Bikes, which come in at a similar level of survivability, just losing a couple wounds, but retaining that Toughness 5 and that exceptional speed and coming in at about 30 points cheaper, and Eradicators who bring almost double the multi melters for points than these unit of invaders will do. That said, the Onslaught Gatling Cannon version is good competition with heavy infantry sweeping vehicles in the Codex, like Gladiator Reapers and the Repulsor Transport. In general, the unit is good both offensively and defensively. If you're using them in an aggressive fashion, they can use your mobility to get interesting angles around line of sight blocking terrain and get up the table to score objectives and secondaries. And defensively, they can soak an immense amount of damage with all of those survivability combos we talked about and hold points like a boss. Personally, I think I'd take them over most of the tanks in the faction, and I would definitely consider bringing a unit of three in a Space Marine army I was making, especially if it was one of those later chapters that we talked about, like Dark Angels or especially Iron Hands, that can support them very well. I'd also consider small units of single invaders in factions like Salamanders to benefit from their multi melted traits a little bit and get those highly survivable multi meltas up the table, and the anti infantry Onslaught Gatling Cannon build in Crimson Fists to get that two plus ballistic skill Gatling cannon firing at some large infantry squads. Anyway, that's going to be it for this review, ladies and gentlemen. I hope you enjoyed. Please let me know down in the comment section if this is the kind of content that you're looking for. This style of review is pretty new to me in the channel, but I decided to try my hand at doing a couple more individual datasheet analyses and uh, see how people liked it. So if you did, please let me know. That'll tell me to make more content like this that you can enjoy, uh, and I can try to impart some sweet 40k knowledge into your brains. As always, big shout out to my Patreon over here patreon.com slash tactical tortoise those people are awesome they got early access to this video and they got a, a special version of this video with extra content in it isn't that sick and they got to see it a couple days early they also got some other benefits like early access to t5s2 tournament pod so if you want to play some online 40k fast Get on over to our community Discord. Link is down in the description. And if you are a patron, then you will get into those tournament events even quicker than normal. Anyways, I hope everyone is remembering to keep it classy, folks. And as always, have happy wargaming.